do something here that's probably going to scare a lot of individuals, especially the organizational types. I'm going to tell you that we're not all equal. Okay? That's my number one rule. There's no way we're equal. I'm an American, a very proud American. And you know what? I wasn't born here. You ever hear a lot of people say that? No. They always talk about their other country. <laughs> Why not the United States? You know, I'm an Italian immigrant. My parents worked in factories. My mother worked at a fake, um, what do you call it, the stocking, where you put coal in it for, as a gag gift. My dad worked at Levington until he uh, went legally blind. My brother and I were the first college graduates, as it should be. Immigrants come here, they try and get your children to go to school. You know, you wait in line sometimes. Sometimes you don't wait in line. <laughs> I chose to be a different political party than most people thought an Italian American son of a union worker should be. That's what I did. You'll hear in the future about a course that I'm going to teach called Reality Management. And so the reality for me is, um, you know, I know what's going on at work, even if I don't know the specificity of each individual's issues. I know there are houses being foreclosed on of people who work for me. I know that some people are getting divorced. I don't need to know why, or they're breaking up with their boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever's going on. But I'd be naive to not know that. <laughs> I know some people have to figure out how to get a ride to work. The reality of that is what we don't teach. And so I came back from Google yesterday, and it's uh, very interesting because most people at all of these major events, to include TED and everything else, they're all West Coast people. Nobody includes East Coast. And it's crazy. I'm like the only guy who shows up. And I have to explain, you know, what, what's going on, and then I say something to this person who just graduated from Harvard and is, wants to have some products be made to help a village in Africa and all this other stuff. And then I say, hey, you know what? I really love that business model. If you do it to where I can help somebody in Detroit, Alex and Ani will be the first one in line, you know, because we're a Made in America organization. But they have not even thought of that. It's absolutely mind-boggling that they have not thought of that. We're going to begin with, you cannot manufacture in the United States. This is the biggest misinformation going on right now in this country. Matter of fact, I was appalled the other day when the president, I believe, of the Federal Reserve came to speak to the Providence Chamber. And that was his topic, basically. He said, hey, you got to move on. You cannot manufacture in the US. How in the world do you explain, and Alex and Donnie, who began with 23 people in 2010, began before that, but when we really started taking off, and have over 650 as we speak and growing. What is that? <laughs> you know, so, so that's a myth. Also, if he does his homework, you would have read, frankly to my dismay, but very happy to hear so, Walmart committing to $100 billion over the next decade to make American-made goods. I attended a retail and apparel CEO summit last week or two weeks ago in New York. The biggest names in fashion. And they're all up there and they're saying their thing. But you know what? I've been to enough things from Qatar to Iraq to following what goes on in, in manufacturing today to know that 150 years from now, some of these guys who are writing the biggest books in business will be looked upon as using what's called TCNs third country nationals, in many cases slave labor, okay, doesn't have to be the ones we know about in America, in creating those companies. And that's a bunch of BS. And yet we sit there and watch him on 60 Minutes and say, oh wow, this guy's great. No, he's not. Figure out how to do it here. Or figure it out how to do it in conditions in other nations that meet our quality standards. Okay? Thank you which goes back to the quality of life. So in the United States, my big belief is this, and it really ties into the next slide. So quality equals quality of life. I'm gonna move into the next slide, which is older is better. And here, the baby boomers aren't gonna like me. These folks followed policies that were detrimental to the United States of America. They exported jobs at a rate in which 
only, the only factor that drove their decision was a single bottom line. So that's an economic one. So they never figured out what we call in the military the second and third order effect. You know, there's a terrorist that we have on a list, and he's in a factory, a bread factory somewhere, and someone tells us, okay, if we just go indiscriminately bomb that factory, we just put 200 people out of work. We just destroyed the opportunity to have bread in the community. So what just happened? You just created likely 200 plus all their family members, more insurgents and terrorists and everything else. That's called a second and third order effect. So when you just went for that extra savings on that dollar, that nickel, that $2, I just lost my neighbor that I grew up with for 20 years. The elementary school just shut down. The basketball courts have grass growing in them. Okay? They didn't understand the second and third order effect of what they were doing. And therefore, my belief is the last 30 years of running business in this country has been run wrong. And so I don't follow it. In addition to that, I'd like to give you a kind of the way I see it when it comes to incorporating various age groups in your, the makeup of your organization. So I'm going to use United States Central Command. United States Central Command is a joint forces organization, meaning that it, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, sometimes Coast Guard, all come together and work in different units. So the way it works is you have what's called a directorate. It's led by a two-star general with a one-star deputy and then whatever function it does. The whole command is led by a four-star with a three-star deputy. Anyway, the J-1 is personnel. So that would be equivalent to HR in business. J-2 is intelligence. That would be equivalent to, let's say, R&D in your organization. The J-3 is operations. A J-4 is logistics. J-5 is plans and policy. J-6 is communications. There is no J-7. J8 is finance, okay? So it's made up just like a company. Well, let me ask you something. The J6, communications. Who would be better suited to be a two-star general of the J6? A 28-year-old from MIT or a 58-year-old who can't turn on PowerPoint? <laughs> so if you show me a 28-year-old, how to make a 28-year-old from MIT a two-star general, I'll show you a better army. Guarantee it. I'll show you a better military. And that's our problem. That is completely age-based. I can't be a general at 25. I can't be a general at... But if you look at Silicon Valley or other places that do have a lot of success using younger brain power, that's how they do it. They don't, they don't discriminate. And I certainly don't discriminate at Alex and Donnie. Our exec team is made up of many individuals who are under the age of 40, under the age of 30, et cetera. And I refuse to follow suit with those that want to continue to throw me resumes that say, oh, yeah, but she doesn't have this on the resume. I don't care. You know, I don't care about that resume. As someone recently said, uh, you know, the person's the resume, not the piece of paper. So that's what you go by. As far as vision, again, I think you need the combination to have the vision. So around the table, you need that broad perspective of what's going on. Employment contracts. So this is unique. So I'm the CEO of a now large organization, getting larger. Uh, did uh, you know, uh, a, a deal recently and soon to do more, in which Wall Street's involved, other things. I don't have a contract. Right, Carolyn? I should have signed the damn thing. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, the fact is, I don't, and I don't want one. I want to do the same activity, the same path, I want, to, I want to be on the same path of what made this nation great. So I go back 30, and I go to 50 before that. So how'd that work? It worked on handshakes. It worked on loyalty. It worked on programs in which you incentivize people. I remember going, my aunt had a great job at Monet. They used to take us to Rocky Point. And, you know, we didn't even work there, but 30 people got to go for two days, and it was just a blast. And you reward your employees. And that's what we do. I've given people $12,000 pay raises on the way to the bathroom. Okay, I don't care, I'm not the government. So I, I do it the way I believe is the correct way, which is you reward people for the work that they do. Technology is bad. This is, this is amazing to me. 
I hear over and over again, people say, oh, they were on Facebook, and they were on this, and they were on that. I hope they were. <laughs> I hope to God they were. So at Alex and Donnie, we give everyone, those in decision-making positions, uh, an iPhone, a laptop, an iPad. You know, I had um, our senior employee, who was actually with the Rafalians before Alex and Donnie for about 14 years, Joanne, she's our comptroller. She said to me, she goes, Giovanni, do you ever think I'd be on Skype? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> no, actually I didn't, you know, but uh, it's mandatory, so I'm glad you are. And um, so, so <laughs> but that's the way it works. You know, you have to have technology, you maximize it. You know, we, we speak that way, so, you know, even though there's a discussion to be had, you know, do you, how often do you go face to face with people? Um, I, I understand there is a discussion there. But you know what? If I'm making 20 decisions in 30 minutes, I don't have time to get up and go down the hall and go see so and so and da da da. I'm, I'm there on Skype while we're talking. Technology is so important and you have to stay ahead of it. Um, next slide, please. Okay, this is interesting. Everyone's always attempting to, or to strive for perfection. Unnecessary. You know, I'll give you a not so pleasant example, but it's reality again. There's what's called battlefield speed. Okay, it is what it is. When you're in a battlefield, you have to get to your objective. You're going to have wounded, you're going to have those killed, but you can't stop. You can't stop at every turn. You'll never get there. Uh, Google is very good at, at utilizing this because they continue to just put things out there. And those that are adopted, they'll continue to fund and, and um, uh, you know, bring, bring to the forefront. But others, um, you know, what, what's it hurt to put it out there? You know, so we, we think this is very important, the battlefield speed. So when I hire, I require that um, everybody who joins our organization, regardless at what level, see me for a, a quick few minutes. Because I have to explain what's happening. Our operational tempo is like this, okay? Don't join this if you're gonna leave at 459. And sure enough, after I have those discussions, there are those who say, hey, you know what, thank you, and, and they give me the honest phone call. Hey, you know what, I have a five-year-old at home, you're right, I don't wanna do that. Or somebody else says, hey, you know, man, I don't wanna give up my membership at Potawatomi. Well, you know what, you can't be here then. Okay, this is uh, kind of from the retail perspective, really, one of the most important ones. This is kind of what we do best. And so uh, I know in East Greenwich, the East Greenwich patch turned the, uh, uh, coined the Alex and Donnie effect. And man, has that been like not only the reality, but it has propelled us to the forefront of um, being desired by uh, you know, those landlords uh, throughout America. And we have now, you know, such success stories in Wayland Square or Main Street East Greenwich or Red Bank, New Jersey. Or, I mean, these are Saratoga Springs, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. These are the places that were Main Street. You, ever, you, know, you know how it was. You go down there and you're like, man, this beautiful building and stuff, but it's boarded up. Oh, there's a... Now we're there. And then everybody else is coming. And they're succeeding there. And what's better than a vibrant Main Street? And think about it, it brings you back to the old world, right? To the European lifestyle, the cafes, the outside, the walking around, having that camaraderie. That's important. And we're leading the way there. And I think it's just one of the best things that we do. Next slide. We love everybody. But that doesn't mean I'm not allowed to tell you that I love America. And Americans are great, and I don't know of a nation that's better than the United States of America. And you can name it if you do, okay? We do everything. We don't do everything right, but we do everything. There are those that have taken us to war, but there are those that have fought the war, okay? And that goes back to some of the generational arguments that I have. There are those of us who still have had to fight the fight, even though we might not have made that decision, okay? There are those of us that have now done the reverse in the way the world should work, which is we now have to take action for the reaction. Did you hear what I just said? We have to take action for the reaction. 
So the reaction was, oh, well, we're going to lose jobs. Let's do NAFTA and lose more jobs. Oh, we're going to you know, get hit at the World Trade Center, and we're going to go to war and go around the world and spend all, <laughs> and go nuts. Or we're going to do this. And all these reactions, OK, many cases not well thought out, OK, which is a baby boomer error. I will tell you that right now. I've seen it in politics, military, and business, and I think I'm qualified based on both the pyramid, I don't care, whatever else, to say all that, OK? And that's, and that's a fact. And, and that's a fact. And so I sit there, and you know, I recall the days I could be at CENTCOM, and something happens, and a Marine colonel comes running out, and he wants to send all these people to go do something. And I'm sitting there shaking my head, and he's like, what, what? I go, nothing, don't worry about it. No, tell me, tell me. I said, don't, don't worry. He's like, you know, swearing at me or whatever. He's like, listen, tell me. I said, well, listen, you know, this is why we can't bring fingernail clippers on an airplane. <laughs> OK? Because guys like you are in charge, <laughs> you know? Because a fingernail clipper was used to kill somebody. We can't have fingernail clippers now. I mean, it's crazy. It's so crazy, all these reactions, OK? We're mo more focused on how people die than how many die. You know how many died in Japan, OK, with the tsunami? Do we have any clue? Nobody knows. None of you guys know the number, OK? Maybe one or two of you. But you know 27 people died in Connecticut. You know 3,000 people died in New York. But you don't know, oh, uh, 80,000 got wiped out. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, it wasn't around us. We don't know, OK? But yet, that's the, what we're conditioned for. And we need to stop. We need to bring it back. Use reality when you manage your decisions and say, listen, what do I know as a person? What did I know or, or was taught either effectively or that I witnessed that I do not want to repeat? And implement that in your decision making. Your decision making is so important. It's important that we have a seat at the table that America has a seat at the table, that manufacturing has a seat at the table, that youth has a seat at the table, okay? And that all that we want to do as a uh, country and as a nation um, is able to be done. And as the song said, you know, be a champion. Just be a champion. You can do it, all right? There's no reason why I'm here, other than the fact that I worked my tail off, made a lot of mistakes, as someone talked about Michael Jordan. But at the end of the day, we're successful and we'll keep succeeding. And thank you all so much. Okay, have a good day.